Hey guys, it's been a little while since I've done a Nightfall Q&A, but seeing as things are, you know, pretty slow around here, I figured a new one could not hurt. So, let's get to some questions. First question, would you say Bad Juju is underrated? Not many people use it, it's in that Rate of Fire and Impact class that everyone loves, it's pretty stable, no horizontal recoil, Hit Fire makes it good up close, and String of Curses is fantastic. Yet I see far more Hawk Saws and PDX 45s. I'd say it's slightly underrated. The reason people like those other guns is because their stability can be completely maxed out, making them have essentially no recoil, which is awesome for longer range fights, while Bad Juju has a lot more kick to it, making it not as great for longer range encounters. So the farther you get away from each other, the more likely something like a maxed out stability Suros PDX-45 is going to beat something like a Bad Juju. However, when Bad Juju is in its ideal range, it's really, really good and great for more supers, which nets you more kills or impact itself on the game. Is it me, or do you think exotics are not as essential as they were in year one? I barely use any exotics now except for certain situations like Black Spindle on Golgoroth and Warpriest. They are definitely not as essential as they used to be, which is both good and bad. It's good because it gives people more options. It's bad because it makes exotics feel not as strong as they were in year one. Exotics are more specialized for certain things as opposed to being all around weapons for everything. I don't know if that was an intended design choice or not because there are definitely still some very good all around exotics out there. Red Death, for example. I know my main overall weapon set does not contain an exotic, Smite of Moraine, Arene RR4, and the Raid Heavy, because all of those weapons work very, very well in an overall setting, not any worse or better than most exotic choices. Why do you use the Arene RR4 over Black Spindle? It depends on the encounter. I use the Arene that I have because it has good bonuses, and I like using it. Black Spindle is a superior sniper. If you can get yourself into a situation where you can just sit still and get constant shots on a target. In the raid, this happens somewhat frequently. Warpriest and Golgoroth are great examples. But for the second half of the raid, or the Nightfall, or Heroic Strikes, or general screwing around, you don't really have those times where you can just sit still and shoot. There's more moving around, which makes Arene my personal choice, especially because it has luck in the chamber. How did you get into making YouTube videos to start with? What influenced you to post your first video on any subject, not just video games? My original reason was because I saw Birger Paul's first Battlefield montages on Reddit. His link is in the description in case you don't know who I'm talking about. And I thought they were really funny. So I wanted to try to make one of my own for Call of Duty since that's what I played at the time. I made a couple of them and you know, they turned out all right. It got some good feedback. So I tried continuing to make more content. My only problem was that Call of Duty is and was very, very, very overcrowded on YouTube, so I never really gained much traction. I still really liked to edit though, and I knew I wanted to keep doing YouTube stuff. Destiny caught my eye, and two years later, you know, here we are. The very first video I ever put up on YouTube ever was just a Call of Duty 4 gameplay on shipment because my friend had a capture card when I started college which was in 2007, so you need to understand that that stuff was very, very new. Then it was just some random stuff from college, but nothing with the intent of, you know, being serious whatsoever. The thing that I talked about earlier was my first serious move into YouTube. Are you still a fan of faster firing snipers in PvP, or have you transitioned over to liking the harder hitters, 1000 yard stare, etc.? How highly do you value the ability to one-shot a super or a guy with an overshield off of a res? I wasn't really a fan of high rate of fire snipers in year one. I was a fan of Praetith's Revenge specifically. It had barely any recoil at all, had six shots per reload, and it had Outlaw and Firefly, which is, you know, not as important, but it was still fun. Sure, it wasn't high on aim assist, but that didn't really matter to me because at the time I was a terrible, terrible sniper, so it didn't really matter. The reason I'm not a fan of them now is because they feel like they have high recoil, only come with four shots, and just don't feel as good. The benefits of using a high impact sniper are just greater than using the high rate of fire ones now. 
We've been through so many special ammo nerfs in the Crucible as well, which really affects those high rate of fire snipers. Are the auto rifle buffs ever going to actually apply? Any official word from Bungie? What do you think of their dishonesty with regards to the patch notes compared to what actually happened? So for those who don't know what happened with the 2.1 patch, Bungie ended up coming out and saying, yeah, so those auto rifle buffs that we talked about earlier, the ones that ranged from 3 to 7% damage buffs, yeah, we were actually off by a factor of 10 to 100. Those buffs ended up being less than 1% of a buff, with the lowest buff being a 0.04% damage increase on bullet hose auto rifles. Naturally, people were not thrilled, neither was I, and Bungie blamed it on a bad typo. I think their bad typo is a load of garbage, and is a very huge oversight on something a lot of people were anticipating to be a very good thing. There is zero reason to actually tell the community about those minuscule changes. Unless there are going to be changes that the community and the public can actually tell are even happening, just stealth buff that stuff. Stealth change it. Everyone knows that auto rifles needed a buff, so saying that they were going to get buffed in a way that everyone thought was actually going to make them good, only to be off by a factor of 10 to 100, is very, very bad. No one is buffing anything by 0.04% and calling it reasonable unless that thing is doing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of points of damage. The community would absolutely have preferred Bungie coming out and saying, we implemented the changes incorrectly, we'll fix it later, as opposed to them saying, yeah, those numbers are totally right, if there indeed was a screw-up. I honestly don't think it's a situation of them lying. I don't, because I think that they would have the common sense to just come clean with that stuff. I just wonder what the thinking was when the patch notes went out with the original numbers, that 3-7%, having no one notice for three weeks that they were wrong, then to have the patch go out the way that it did. I'd just prefer Bungie to not say anything if they are nerfing or buffing something under 1%. Just say nothing. If it's only going to affect the back end, if it's only going to affect the numbers that Bungie sees and not the public, it's not even worth bringing up because it just brings just just awful. Just awfulness everywhere. What do you think of Sunbreakers since the patch? I have found hammers to be a little more inconsistent, which I guess was the intention of the nerf to make them not less consistent, but not as lenient as they were. But I've had plenty of times where I thought I nailed someone and they just did not go down. There's been a lot of speculation and theory as to why that's the case, and the main reason is that supposedly the radius of damage on the hammers was reduced, but the grenades and horseshoes aspect of the hammers was not changed, so hammers are reaching what is considered to be an acceptable distance to trigger, but the explosion radius isn't big enough to actually kill a target, so they're proccing too early. I haven't done any testing myself, but for now I see that as being a pretty reasonable theory. Otherwise, yeah, I am dying a lot easier than I did before the patch, which I assume was the intent of a lot of the changes. For the daughters fight, as the relic runner, when you slam the relic on them, sometimes you get pushed back. What is the correlation behind them pushing you and the direction that you go? Is it random or fixed? If you do get shoved, the direction you get shoved is 180 degrees of the direction that you slammed the relic on them. So basically directly behind you. If you position yourself exactly in between your group and the daughter, you'll be pushed back right to your group. If you do it from the side or something, you're just going to get blown backwards or probably to a direction that you don't want. To ensure that you'll be pushed in a direction that you want, set yourself up before dunking and then don't move your camera or anything. Let the whole process happen first, then move. Ever thought of making a video with your thoughts of what Bungie should or shouldn't do for Destiny 2? We are not nearly close enough to Destiny 2 for a video like that, and on top of that, I really have no idea. I'm really bad at speculating, especially now where the direction of the game is headed is just completely unknown right now. I couldn't even fake giving thoughts. All I have right now is take the improvements that they made with the Taken King and just keep going. They've really gotten the core of the game into a good spot, so a few more tweaks and it'll be very, very good. Then, they can focus more on making that core experience bigger. I have a feeling that the removal of old gen, so PS3 and 360, will help the game in 
somewhat significant ways. Do you think the Golgoroth challenge would have been better if it was for every orb you didn't shoot down, it would add a mark to the tablet? Yes, but you could get around that by just shooting down the orbs and not using them. You would need to have the game to be able to realize, in addition to unused orbs, that pools of light were not utilized and be sure to accommodate penalties accordingly. I imagine that's very difficult to program. That or you'd need to make it so the game makes orbs immune and that you'd have to knock them down in a specific order, which I feel is pretty lame because you should be able to go in whatever order that you want. It's a tough problem to solve. Are you still looking at The Division as a game for the channel? What about other games? Yes, I will still be covering The Division on the channel when it releases in March. I'll probably devote a week or two to Division content exclusively while Destiny takes a backseat. As for why I don't cover other stuff, you know, I've seen a lot of the, hey, why don't you cover something like Fallout on your channel? The reason is because I'm not as familiar with the Fallout series as I am with Destiny. Let's face it, most of you are here because I know a lot about Destiny, a lot, and you want to know more about Destiny. I'm still around because Destiny has a lot of sticking power on YouTube for whatever reason. Fallout, I don't think has that sticking power. The first month of Fallout was all about let's plays and let's find the best guns in the game, and then the next month is gonna be for these like super crazy challenge runs or doing really weird stuff with the game or speed runs, whatever. Then after that, it'll probably go away. Not to mention that there are people significantly more knowledgeable than I with regards to something like Fallout. I don't know the game that well. Something I'll be experimenting with very soon is a let's play of Final Fantasy X. This is a game that I know very, very well in terms of a typical playthrough and I know that I would like to practice my skills in this format of video. Depending on how well that goes, could pave the way for other non-Destiny content in the future. But once again, rest assured that Destiny will always be the number one on this channel. Last question, have you ever used a skateboard? I have. I skated for about a year in my teens, you know, on and off. I learned how to ollie, how to drop in, and otherwise could ride around without falling on my butt. The reason I quit? My dad moved my skateboard into our shed, not with malicious intent, you know, he was just cleaning, and I didn't find it for three years. I guess I didn't really care that much because I don't remember looking too hard for it, nor did I even bother asking my dad where he put it. So that is, that's how I quit skateboarding, is I lost my skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for the Nightfall Q&A. As usual, you can ask me questions pretty much anywhere, but I check the following places the most. AskFM slash HelloDado, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash DadoDoesDestiny, on Twitter, at DadoDoesDestiny, and pretty much every single stream that I do over at twitch.tv slash itsdado. I've answered over 7,000 questions on my Ask. FM, among countless more in other places. So I'm pretty available, I'm pretty accessible, but I apologize if I cannot get to you though. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.